All right, guys, thank you guys for joining me. So we are going to be looking at Psalm 26 today, guys. So I hope everybody out there is having a wonderful and blessed day, guys. I know I feel so blessed that you decided to watch this video today. And let me share some of God's word with you. Fellowship and scripture are so key to a, a strong daily walk of faith, guys. Um, let's pray and let's get into it, guys. Heavenly Father, I want to come before you today, Lord, thankful, grateful, humbled by your, by your, by the impact of your love and by the provision of your love, by the, by the sustenance that is your love, God, the nourishment that it is to our, to our, our minds, our souls, our bodies, every last part of our being from the spiritual to the molecular god you you sustain us with grade a ingredients father god thank you for that all too often we we live in the ways of the world and we pump ourselves full of what the world has to offer and it is not grade a god it is not grade a but you god you provide for us a, a a, a nourishment and a sustenance that nothing else can compare for God that that allows within us a transformation that we can become this new creation by the blood of Jesus Lord I ask that this video Lord be like your word able to go out and to achieve your purpose to help to bring your will to bear whatever part it can play in that God I am so grateful for. I ask that you continue to lead us, continue to guide us, continue to push us in our self-enriching, self-edifying behaviors, Lord, things that edify one another and edify the church, Lord, to lift it up, to shine God's name, to shine Christ's name and Christ's love and Christ's deeds to this world, Lord. In your heavenly and holy name, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, guys. God is amazing, y'all. He is so, so amazing, man. Anyway, somebody out there, shout amen, guys, and let's look at Psalm 26, man. All right, guys. Psalm 26, a prayer for divine scrutiny and redemption, a psalm of David. Hey, look, guys, it's even cleaner back there, man. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my mind and my heart, for your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. I have not sat with idolatrous mortals, nor will I go in with hypocrites. I have hated the assembly of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, so I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all all your wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not gather my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men in whose hands is a sinister scheme and whose right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity, redeem me, and be merciful to me. My foot stands in an even place. In the congregation, I will bless the Lord. Amen, guys. Something about Psalm 26 has always stirred something in me. I, I, I Oh, man, the words that David spoke in this psalm are just so powerful and and not at all at surface value it can almost seem boastful or 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 
cocky or arrogant, but that's not it at all. We know what David was about because we know that David was a man after God's own heart. It's what scripture tells us. And so, yes, David was a man and he, he had the infirmity that is humanity. But he also had a heart that was after God's, it says. And so when he writes this, I can feel his, his, his pride in God at being able to say, I am vindicated, not because of me, but because God. Look at verse 11. He, he talks all of this about how great he has done and everything, but all with the, with, the, with the backing of God. And we see that in verse 11 as he cries out, redeem me. He says, right before he says, but as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful to me at the same time. Because his righteousness is God's righteousness, not his own. Just like us today, guys. I'm sorry. I got all riled up. I got all riled up. All right, guys. Like I said, thank you guys for letting me share with y'all. Thank you for joining me as we look at chapter 26 of Psalms, another work from King David. As a psalmist, David is well-versed and again makes use of that concentric arrangement style to best serve and drive home his content and its intent. Man's duality is in view with verses centering on David and the Lord Almighty and then shifting to focus on David and sinners and the company of sinners. And So let's look at 26.1, guys. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. It's the same kind of... It's the same kind of thing out of David that you can imagine when he was confronting David, when he was confronting Goliath. I won't miss. This stone will do what God intends it to do. He, he says, I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. I love that. Right off the jump, David joins himself both in motive and action to the righteous, not the wicked, or, or those practicing a lifestyle of sin. Many in the world claim piety, fully aware that they do not fit that bill. To be able to claim such things honestly as David does is a, is a goal for each of us in our daily walk of faith. Able to honestly invite God to test our claimed veracity with words like walked, trusted, not sat, and have hated, they all serve to highlight his, his proper worship and long-haul integrity, achieving the goal of an obedient and faithful lifestyle. When integrity and trust become second nature, we, like David, can call to the Lord to deal with us in a right manner, no matter the case. Yes, Lord, whatever it is, deal with me in your way, God, because I know that I have turned everything over to you. And maybe I'm missing something, but I know I'm not doing nothing wrong. And that's the place we want to get to. And it's not easy, and nobody stays there forever. And, you know, we, the, 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 the walk, living as supernatural in the natural world is one that has ebbs and flows like the tides. And that's natural and it's okay. It's all about keeping our eyes on that grand prize and the victory that lies in the love and salvation of our Savior. All right, guys, let's see. Before I get off on another tangent, 26.9. I riled up today, y'all. Do not gather my soul with sinners nor my life with bloodthirsty men. Do not gather my soul with sinners nor my life with bloodthirsty men. He's like, God, I, I haven't lived spiritually as a sinner. Yes, I'm a man and I have sinned, but I do not live a sinful lifestyle. And my life, my life is not a life of seeking violence. Yes, I have defended and I have fought for what is righteous, but I am not bloodthirsty. So, all sin, but not all are sinners, i.e., 
practicing a wicked lifestyle. And David seeks to distance himself from just such people. Sinners are not those who sin. Yes, they do that. But sinners are those who live contrary to the word and the will of God. To be clear, we are called to exemplify God's love to all. We must do so in a manner that is unstaining to ourselves and that it doesn't drag us down that path. And that's that's uh, to each their own. That has to be handled between you and God alone. 2611, guys. <clears throat> but as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful to me. That verse that I was talking about, guys. The integrity spoken of here in verse 11 looks back to verse 1. Let's read verse 1 again, guys, because we got the time. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. So, for I have walked in my integrity. Bam, verse 11. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Followed by, for anybody that thought he was having a big head, Redeem me and be merciful to me. He owns his righteousness that comes by God and God alone. And he owns his shame and his call to be redeemed and have mercy shown. And I think that's why it says that David was a man after God's own heart. Moments just like that. All right, guys, 2612. Last one I'm going to share with you today. Oh, hold on. I wanted to share something else here about 11. Repetition, the repetition of the integrity part, drives home the dire need of just such a character trait. This also serves as a means of bookending the psalm and drawing to a strong, hard, hammered home conclusion. All right, 2612, last one I want to share with you. My foot stands in an even place. In the congregation, I will bless the Lord. My foot stands in an even place. In the congregation, I will bless the Lord. See, because we choose where we stand. We don't have to stand in any one place. We choose. And so he says, my foot stands in an even place, a well-keeled place, a place not of extremes, but of foundational strength. We end with a metaphor that uplifts the ideal of personal stability and a righteous and wholehearted relationship with our loving creator. David's language of my foot stands in an even place, it gives voice to the character of that is desirable in God's elect, and that is a character that is solid and stable with a strong moral base, one that seeks piety, though is fully aware they themselves will never ascertain pure and holiness. Integrity is a key characteristic. These are people that have a solid, firm footing, not only in the physical and natural world, but in the spiritual world, in the supernatural world. All right, guys. Amen, amen, amen. If you're not subscribed, man, please smash the subscribe button. Drop a new video like this six days a week, guys. And trust me, God wants us to read it, man. He wants us to share it, discuss it, think about it, reread it, think about it, reread it, reread it today, read it another time. Man, you can pull so much out of the same scripture, different parts in your life, because it's living and breathing and sharper than any two-edged sword. So let's share that together, guys. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you loved it. If you do, my heart goes out to you. I want nothing more than to take what I have inside of me and try my best to shine it to this world because I was lost and I was going to hell and I don't want anybody else to go there either. If you have any prayer requests, any comments, drop them into the comment section down below. I love you. Father God loves you so much more, man. Y'all go out there and have a blessed day now.